G'day everybody, we're back and today we're going to be doing some intake air temp testing on the GT. We've got a duct in the headlight, uh, a cold air intake if you will, and we're going to test out in the real world, on the road, uh, with data to back it up, how much it actually affects the intake air temp on, on this particular day. It's quite a cool day, it's only about 19 degrees. We'll test it today and see how it goes. So this is the test subject here, uh, it's a BA GT for those of you guys that haven't seen it before. Uh, we do have a duct in the headlight here. It's basically just a hole cut straight through a straight line into the uh, homemade airbox I've got here. It's pretty ghetto looking, but uh, obviously it works. This is the way the car was when it went 11s. I uh, can't speak for anybody else's cold air intakes. Uh, this is the setup that I've chosen to go with. I bought a spare headlight, it's about $110 off eBay. Cut a hole in the front. Obviously the air comes straight through. You can see the pod filter up in there. We'll go for a drive and we'll test this out and do what kind of data we can get a hold of. So I will show you guys what we're using here. We've got HP Tuner's VCM scanner. This is basically how we're gonna log the intake air temps here. We've got intake air temp just here. The ignition advance over here, map, uh, RPM, all that kind of stuff. So what I'll do is I'm gonna go and sit on the side of the road until the intake air temp reaches a stable point. From there, I'll do a run. I have tape over the headlight at the moment, over the cold air intake. Uh, so it's taped up uh, as is. Try and make this test as scientific, as scientifically accurate as possible. I don't sell anything, so anyway, so we'll, we'll start the car and go for a drive.
test last night. The data logs didn't seem to show too much of a change. Uh, we're only traveling at around 60 kilometers per hour though. Uh, we're gonna go out today and uh, I'm gonna get on the highway. We're gonna do 100 k's an hour for a minute or two. Uh, I'll check the data logs and we'll do the test again at 100 k's an hour to see if it makes more of a difference. Guys, as you can see here on the table next to me, we had a small change in the IATs across the 60 km per hour test. I'll give you a second to take that in there. Uh, the second test did start at a slightly higher degrees. 
Uh, that's basically just from heat soak of the engine bay. Uh, there's nothing I can really do about that. It's still a back-to-back -back test and it's as close as I could get it. But have a look at those numbers. You can determine whether or not you think it's useful at 60 k's an hour. Uh, then we'll jump across and have a look at the 100 km per hour test now. So I'll give you guys a second here to look at the 100 km per hour test. Uh, the IATs didn't seem to change too much and that probably reflects the fact that the cold air intake isn't operating as effectively as it could be, which in my opinion is a good thing because it gives me something to improve on and take back to the strip. Unfortunately, I couldn't test it any more than 100 kilometers per hour for you guys. So going down the drag strip at 200 k's an hour, I can't really give you any information on that, but I think it needs to be improved. Anyway, uh, have a look at the data and uh, let me know what you think. All right, guys, thanks for watching that one. Just like me, you're probably a little bit surprised by that. I never would have thought that cutting a hole in the headlight would do absolutely nothing on the highway for me. Uh, whether it's a GT thing, I'm not sure, but didn't work for me. There's probably improvements that could be made. Maybe I'll try and seal off the cold air intake a little bit better on the bonnet. And I do have a pipe that I'm going to stick in that hole, seal that hole off so the air can't hit the first layer of the lens, tumble around uh, without making its way all the way through into the actual uh, airbox. So there's definitely improvements that need to be made there. Whether I need to invest in an aftermarket airbox and do some more testing, definitely willing to do that. I haven't decided who's I'm going to test yet, but if, if I don't see some nice gains myself, uh, and I probably will go to someone else's design. But uh, for the moment, I'll keep using this one. Uh, it's obviously working well enough, but it can be improved. So uh, thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, next time I go to the track, I might do this test again out on the track at Brecky Laps. We'll see when I'm actually racing the car, how much of a difference it makes. Anyway, thanks guys.